ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. As you know by now for sure, the first chapters in Genesis and the Torah are the basis for many of my reflections of my thinking because actually they are full of mystery so that every year when I reread them I think about them maybe in a different way. Let's start this way. Why did God create only one man in the beginning? We know that if you can produce one car you can produce a thousand cars. Why did God create only one man? Well, who knows? That was God's will. But the Mishnah says something about it. The Mishnah says the following. God created one world to teach us that in the beginning, humanity consisted of one man. That means that if you assassinate, if you murder one man, that's the same as killing all of humanity because in the beginning, humanity was one. The same thing on the other hand. If you help another human being, that is the same as helping all of humanity. Look at how important that is to help another human being. Well, that's a very interesting thought. But on the other hand, if you think, of it, think about it from a different angle, who were the cousins of this Adam? He didn't have any cousins. He had nobody around. How did he learn how to live with other people? What does society mean to Adam? There is no such thing as society. So man in the beginning was really very self-centered. It took a long time. For mankind to develop the idea of responsibility, we are one for another. When Cain says to God, Hashomer achi anochi, Abel is no longer there, and Cain says to God, Am I my brother's keeper? He doesn't know what brother is, he doesn't know what keeper is. What do I have to do with another human being? I am unto myself. I am the center of the world. I am the only one. Maybe that's what happened in the very beginning. All the first few generations. You know, God destroyed the world after a number of generations since the creation of Adam, according to our rabbis, ten generations. One man was saved, that was Noah, because Noah was found to be righteous. If you consider everybody else, he was a righteous person. This is what some of our rabbis say, but they don't say that he was righteous altogether because he must have been also very self-centered. Why didn't Noah tell all those that lived in those times, you know, God is going to destroy the world. Do something about it. What did they do? The depravity all over. Everybody just thought about themselves. Our rabbis say that what really finished them off was that they had total disregard for what belonged to somebody else. You know, it's them. Everything is for each and one of them and everybody else. That's their problem. They had lost all respect for what belongs to somebody else. So why didn't Noah do something about it? Well, our rabbis say, you know, it took Noah 120 years to build the ark. And when people would pass by Noah's house and they'd see him doing something, they'd say, what are you doing, Noah? I am building an ark because God is going to destroy this world unless you change your mind. Yet apparently nobody listened to him. Why not? Maybe they were so self-centered. Maybe Noah himself wasn't that convinced either. According to our rabbis, he didn't enter the ark until water was up to his neck. He didn't enter the ark. Maybe Noah didn't even believe that was going to happen. It was an individualistic society that we had then. God destroyed the world, and the world was going to start once again with Noah. But the Bible says that a few generations later on, we find that the people are in a certain valley. They want to build a tower that will reach heaven. They want to make sure that everybody sees that tower, that no one will get lost. They had one language, no more, one type of behavior. According to some of our rabbis, they didn't have private property. Everything was centered around building this tower. We live around it, we'll eat around it. There is no such thing as private property. Maybe it was a counter reaction to what happened in the times of Noah, where everybody just thought about themselves individually. Now comes a society different. You know, we're only going to think about the collective. The important thing is that we are all well, that individually it doesn't matter what happens. They say that when somebody would fall off the tower and die, they didn't care that much about them. The important thing was to build the tower. 
when a brick would fall down, that was a disaster because it made the building of the tower a little bit longer. In other words, human beings in that type of society, as an individual, doesn't matter. What matters is the collective. Well, what is the lesson that we learn from that? We learn maybe that the extremes are no good. You know, when somebody thinks only about himself, that's no good. When somebody thinks only about society and nothing about the individual, that's no good either. We have to look for some kind of balance between the two ideas, what is necessary for the survival of each individual and what is necessary for the progress of society. Well, we are in the, begin we are in the early stages of humanity. In a sense, we are learning how society, how the human being has to live, how he has to behave in order for society to become stronger and stronger, not only materially, but above all, spiritually, socially, and emotionally.